Now in this first part of the question, part A, we're given this data here in the table and asked to draw then a scatter diagram for these points here. So you just simply got to plot them. Just go along the d-axis to 2.2 and then up on the f-axis at 18. So you're going to have a point somewhere around here. And if you repeat that for all the points, you should get a scatter diagram that looks something like this. You don't have to label the points A, D, B, F, C and E, but I've just done that for clarity. Now in part B, we're asked to explain why a linear regression model may be appropriate to describe the relationship between F and D. Well clearly you can see from the scatter diagram that the points lie generally somewhere around a line, straight line going through something like this. So in order to answer that I'd just say that the points lie close to a straight line. All right? So let's just write that in. Points lie close to a straight line. And I think that should justify why a linear regression model would be appropriate. Now, in part C, we're asked to work out the statistics SDD and SFD. Now, before I do that, you'd have most probably learned by now that uh, SXY, because normally in tables you get your X and Y data rather than D and F. So it's just a simple conversion. You should know that SXY is equal to the sum of sigma XY minus sigma X, sum of X, sum of Y, all divided by N. And from this, you can generate, say, SXX, because all you need to do is wherever you see a Y, replace it with an X. So here you'd have sigma XX, but that would be X squared. And for this part, it would be sigma X times another sigma X. In other words, sigma X all squared over N. So when it comes to this part of the question where we're asked to first of all work out SDD, you can see that this is basically using this formula here. Only for us it's going to be sigma of d squared minus sigma d all squared over n. Now we've got some summary statistics here. We've got sigma d squared, that's good, but we need sigma d, the sum of all the d values. So what you're going to need to do is add up 2.246, 2.5, 8 and 5. And if you do that, sigma d in other words, what you find you get is 27.7. So you're going to need that particular value. So we can now substitute our values into the formula here. Sigma d squared is 152.09. And then we've got minus sigma d, 27.7, but we need to square all of that and divide it by n. n is the number of rows, sorry, number of columns, I should say, that we've got here. And that would be 6, so divide that by 6. Now if you work that out on your calculator, what you'll find you get is 24. 208 and so on, which if you round that say to three significant figures is going to equal 24.2 to 3SF. So that's the first one then. Now the other value we've got to work out is S of FD and to do that I turn to this particular formula up here. The X corresponds to the F and the Y corresponds to the D. So we're going to have sigma of FD minus and then sigma F multiplied by sigma D and that's all divided by N. So all we've got to do is substitute our values in for this. 
but we don't know it's the sum of f, sigma f. So you're going to have to add up this row here. The 18, 20, 25, 23, 32 and 28. And if you do that, sigma f, you'll find, comes to 146. So again, all we need to do now is substitute the values into here. And if we do that, sigma fd, we're given that up here. It is 723.1, so 723.1, and then minus sigma f, which we just worked out, is 146. Multiply that with sigma d, 27.7, and divide that by n, n being 6. And again, if you do that on your calculator, what you'll find you should get is 49 point naught six six and so on okay and if you round that say to three signaling figures you're going to get forty nine point one to three SF so there's SFD okay so I hope it's given you some idea then of those first three parts